For a long time I wanted to learn to write plugins for X-Plane, but when I started thinking about all the Microsoft C++ suite and all the stuff that you have to install to, to get that to work, I just have not had the stomach for it. Then I made an exciting discovery. I had watched several videos about FS Economy, and I decided to give it a try. Well, when I downloaded it, I saw that the X-Plane plugin was developed using a Python interface written by Sandy Barber, one of the X-Plane developers. And since I had written several Python programs, I thought, well, heck, this is not going to be that bad. And in fact, it's not. So if you have any programming experience at all, you may not find it too difficult. And wouldn't you love having the ability to customize X-Plane to your liking? So here are all the tools that you're going to need. And I'll put the links to all of these in the description. The first thing you're going to need is the Python program itself. And you shouldn't be scared off by that because it's a pretty small install. The Python interface plugin is written using a specific version. And this is the one you need to get. 2.7.9. So when you go to the install page, be sure and pick the right version for your system. In my case, it's Windows 10 64-bit, so I'll choose the uh, Windows x86 64 MSI installer. Next, you're going to need Sandy Barber's Python interface plugin. And here's where you find that. And here in the center of the page, you see Python interface downloads, so we click on that. Then we find a Downloads button, so we click on that. And at the bottom of that page, you see Python Interface.zip. And be sure you get the one for Python 2.7, which is the last choice. Then if we go back a page and roll down near the bottom, you'll find Python Scripts.zip. And these are example plugins that you can use to help you get started. And this last tool is a data ref editor. I've included this because one of the more challenging tasks that you have in writing plugins is dealing with data refs. And if you don't know, a data ref is a reference to some value or characteristic inside Xplain, such as the aircraft's airspeed or the state of a cockpit switch. And since there are over 2,000 data refs inside Xplain, this tool is really invaluable. So we'll just follow the links and get the most recent version, which is at this time version 12-11. So in summary, here's the tools you need. You need the Python program, version 2.7.9. You need the Python interface plugin, and you need the example plugins so that you can get a feel for how to write these plugins. And then finally, you're going to need the data ref editor to help you find the various data refs and monitor them as you write your script. Now as you may know from watching my other videos, I much prefer using analog trim, that is turning a knob rather than pressing a button to control the airplane's trim. Now I didn't realize until recently that X-Plane does not disable analog trim whenever you engage the autopilot. And this causes the autopilot to fight with the trim controls so that the plane will uh, porpoise and just not hold attitude to such an extent that really the autopilot's almost useless. As an experiment, I decided to turn on button trim just to kind of see how it was, and I was amazed at how well the autopilot was able to control the airplane's attitude. It got me thinking how I wish I could write a plug-in that would disable analog trims while the autopilot is engaged, and then re-enable those trims when the autopilot switched back off. About that time, I discovered Sandy Barber's Python interface, and I was off to the races. Now, before I show you the program that I wrote, let me show you where the Python interface files are installed. And we're looking here in Resources Plugins, and we see the two folders, Python Interface and Python Scripts. And of course, the Python Interface folder was installed from the zip file. And the Python Scripts folder is a folder that you create, and that's where you put your plugin. And this file called pi underbar aptrim.py is the Python script of the program that I wrote. 
And you'll also notice there's another one here that's a .pyc, and that's a compiled version that makes the plugin load faster. Now let's take a look in explain settings. And the first thing I want you to notice is that I have three profiles here. The user profile is where I have all three trims set, elevator, aileron, and rudder. The C172, I only have the elevator trim because the Cessna only has the one elevator trim. And then I have a profile for helicopter, which has its own set. So in the profile for the C172, I have my elevator trim set up in the CH Pro throttle. And I replaced the little mini stick with two knobs, and I'm using one of those knobs as the elevator trim. And while we're in here, let's take a look at this response curve for the elevator trim. And I don't know if it's my imagination, but it seems like in the latest versions of X-Plane, they have really done work to improve these response curves. I used to not use them at all. As you can see from this graph, the response around the center of the axis is very gradual and only gets aggressive toward the ends of the travel. And this produces a very gentle trim control. I love it. I used to adjust the response curves in the CH software, but the problem with that was it created too much of a dead zone in the center. And now I set it pretty much linear in the CH software and then use uh, X-Plane's response curve here to do as you see in the graph. And there's no dead spot at all. There's constant movement, but it's very gradual, very nice. Okay, well let me show you the code that disables all the joystick trim axes while the autopilot is engaged. The Python interface plugin software provides a class named Python interface. And it's inside this class that you provide the various methods required by the Xplane plugin interface. The X plugin start method gets called only when the plugin first gets loaded. So this is where you would want to initialize data that will get updated as the program runs. There are two important variables that we need to initialize in this method. One is the current state of the autopilot, which is initially off, so this variable autopilot on gets set to zero. The other variable that we want to initialize as empty is the axes list, which will store all joystick axis assignments. The workhorse that does the heavy lifting is the method called draw window callback. This method is typically used when drawing or writing a window to be displayed, which I only do during debugging, in order to write values of the axis assignments out for verification purposes. What's important to realize about this method is it gets called every time X-Plane gives the plugin a time slice, which occurs many times a second. And here in this part of the code, there's four states that we can be in at any given time. The first state is the transition from the autopilot being disengaged to being engaged. This state lasts only a brief instant and it is here that we first set the autopilot on variable to true, then load a variable to store all joystick axis assignments and this is done using a function called xplm get data which retrieves data ref values. Next we save the unaltered axis assignments to a file. This is important because if X-Plane crashes or you simply exit while the trims are disabled, we need a way to restore them when the sim comes back up. Saving them to a file is the safest way to do this. Then we disable the trim axes. We do this by looping through the axis list, looking for specific integers corresponding to the various joystick axis assignments. It just so happens that 17 is code for the elevator trim, 18 is code for aileron trim, and 19 is rudder trim. And the final task is to actually disable the trims, and we do that by calling XPLM set data, which is a function that changes the joystick axis assignments referenced by the data ref sim joystick joystick axis assignments. The second state we're concerned with is the transition from the autopilot being on to it being disengaged. Like the first state, this also lasts only a brief instance. Here we first set the autopilot on variable to false, 
Then, since we know that we want to enable all the trims and that we had previously saved them in a file during the off to on transition, we'll simply load the trim list from that file. This next part is just kind of a safety issue. If for whatever reason, when we read the values back from the file, if it's not exactly 500, which is the size of the access list, then we get the hell out because obviously something has happened to the file and we don't want to continue to use it since it's untrustworthy. And lastly, and only after we're completely sure that the data that we got is valid, we save the data ref using the function XPLM set data, which will restore all the access assignments to their original condition. The third state is actually the very first time this method gets called. Here we read the access assignment data ref and search it for the trim axes values 17, 18, and 19. If we don't find any of these values, then we know that xplane must have terminated while the trims were disabled, so we will restore them from the file. The fourth state is actually the least exciting of all. Under normal non-debugging conditions, it has nothing to do at all. It's only during debugging that this state has any task at all, and that is to write all the values of the access assignments to the display window. Under normal conditions, nothing is being written, and it's important that this part of the code exit quickly as most of the life of the plugin is spent in this part of the code. So essentially, the program just sits and waits for the autopilot to be either engaged or disengaged and then enables or disables the trim in response. So if you're hardcore enough to have stuck with me so far, let's see how the plugin performs in uh, X-Plane. Our plugin is in place now and we can see the trim wheel moving as I turn the trim knob. I have the plugin running in debug mode and you can see the output it's producing and we see the joystick exit assignment 0 has the value of 17 which is our elevator trim axis. So now we'll engage the autopilot Taking a look at our plug-in output, we see that the autopilot is on and we see no signs of the elevator trim axis number 17, which tells us that the elevator trim has been disabled. Now I'm pressing the autopilot disable button on my joystick and we can see that the elevator trim axis has been restored. Now I'm going to edit the plug-in and I'll change the debug flag from 1 back to 0, which is the program's normal run state. To reload the plug-in, we use the Python interface control panel and press the reload scripts button. And this demonstrates how easy it is to make a change to your plug-in and reload it even while the sim is running. As you can see, the plug-in is now running silently. All action, no talk. Sort of the Tuco philosophy. When you have to shoot, shoot, don't talk. And the last thing I want to show you is the data ref editor. You get to that through the plug-ins menu under data ref editor and show data refs and this thing opens up across the entire monitor and since I have three monitors it's all the way across so I'm going to have to resize it. Now let's say we're trying to figure out what data ref is used for enabling and disabling the autopilot so we'll just type in the word autopilot and we get a pretty good sized list but looking up through here looks like this autopilot mode is a good candidate so we'll watch that value while we're pressing the autopilot button and sure enough it changes from a 1 to a 2. And turning the autopilot off brings it back to 1. Now that we know the data ref that we're interested in we can narrow our search by typing in autopilot under bar mode and all we'll get is the data ref we're interested in.
Now to turn off the data ref editor, we just go back to plugins, data ref editor, and delete viewers. And I just leave the data ref editor plugin in place, and if I ever need it, I just bring it up, look at a value, close it back out, and we're back to normal. Well, I hope this has been useful and that you have yet another tool that you can add to your tool bag that helps make X-Plane even more enjoyable. See you next time.